Hey guys, the fish are jumping, so let's go fishing with a fly rod versus hardware. So I thought I'd uh, talk about how how to fly rod fish for beginners because it's been so long and I've been so out of contact. I don't know left from right when it comes to fly fishing again. So it's been a learning experience and trying to figure out what is a Doc Spratly and what is a Nymph and what is a streamer and what's a woolly bugger and all these little tiny little things. It's like, what are these things, dude? Like, I don't even know. You just put them on the hook, throw them in the lake, catch fish. That's, that's how you do it, right? No. So I got some lessons from some old timers kicking around before they went home, which is kind of nice. So I'm going to share some of my little fly fishing for beginners, obviously. I'm going to do a little Russell Brandt talking with you here on my hands. I'm just going to start on the top of my notes with the Doc Spratly. I've got quite a few of them here. This is a red with a white tail and it looks like a gold wrap. Um, I have not gotten any bites in this lake with this thing yet. I've got actually caught a few of these. This one's actually got a little yellow tail instead of white. So if you can see that. This one was actually on the hook and I didn't get any bites, which is kind of surprising considering these usually do get some good bites in, in lakes like this at this time of the year, according to the old timers. So I've got another one. This one's an orange one, it looks like a silvery wrap. This one does not have a tail, it is used. It's also coming apart, if you can tell, this thread is just annihilated, like it's caught so many fish in the past from my grandparents or whoever got this fly and passed it down to me. It's got like a silver wrap around it. Here I've got a yellow Doc Spratly with a red tail on it. And it looks like a, like a brown or brass. It looks like a worn out brass or it's missing its wrap, but it used to be brass and it's been broken. So that's an, also a uh, passed down fly that I've received. So those are my Doc Spratleys that I can tell. I might have a few other ones that uh, could be Doc Spratleys, but I have no idea if they are or not because they're so, so different. Like this one here actually looks like a Doc Spratly, but not like the other Doc Spratleys I was Googling. Pink tail, blue haired, kind of like a, a party of pink and gold and brass. It's like funky different colors on that. What looks to be possibly a Doc Spratly, but I could not say for sure, so don't quote me on that. So that's, that's all my Doc Spratlys as far as I know. So I do have a bunch of nymphs. Nymphs are really easy to tell because they've got this hump on the back of their head. Um, usually different colors, some are different. So this one is an orange one. I have thrown it in this lake, Osprey Lake, and not gotten any bites. Um, couldn't really tell you. It looks like he's got a black head with like a tan body, a white back with an orange long tail. Now, I don't know, are these supposed to look like dragonflies or baby dragonflies? I don't know. Could not tell you because I have no idea. So that will lead me into my favorite nymph for this lake, but I have not gotten any bites at this time of the year. It's got a glow on the back, back or whatever, backing. Uh, he's like a greenish brown body with a tan flash silvery-ish body tail-ish or whatever with a black head. I've caught big fish in this lake, um, 18 inches I think it was, or 17 inches or almost 18 inches, I don't remember, but it's been four or five years. So that is something that I can't seem to get any bites at this time of the year, because this is October. So maybe, maybe these guys don't bite in October and it's a June fly. So that's also another thing you gotta look out for is, is um, 
the differences in times of the year. Here's a white one, not glow in the dark. A little bit fluffier, a little bit bigger. He's got like a black tail, very similar colored body, black head, larger hook, but I've not gotten any bites on that. So that matches that nymph that I've already got in my kit. So that's all my um, the white slash gray tailed nymphs. Now I'm gonna go into three other nymphs that I have. I'm gonna go with two. These were just given to me. Now these, I was told, are adolescent dragonflies. So they're just they're just babies or something like that. I don't know how that works. I, I don't know, are these supposed to be dry flies, wet flies? I don't know. That's a very good question. I've never even bothered to Google or research into that. Maybe somebody will tell me. Anyways, these have like a silver gold, you no, know, more goldish wrap around a yellowed body. One's black and one is blue with orange heads. I caught one fish in one of these and the other one I did get a couple bites, but these both work in this lake at this time of the year. So those are pretty cool little fancy gadgets. These were given to me. I'm gonna go into my Lance Smith that was also given to me. Um, he's got silver body, or silver wrap around the body, black body, green feather tails around his neck, something like that. And he's supposed to be a good catcher, but I haven't got a single nibble on him. Maybe it's just the time of the day, I have no idea. But uh, I was told, and this was actually given to me, so. I was told that this guy should have a good bite on him and catch a good fish size, a size, good size fish. I mean, good size fish in this lake for that fly. So those are my nymphs. Um, I honestly don't know what this one is called, but he's got like a silver wrapped body. He's green. He's got like a tough under his face and a big long tail or, I don't know, cape or something? I don't know what you would call it. But he's got a white tail, and I caught two or three fish on this. A couple of them I threw back, they're a little bit small. This one is a heavy hitter, so if I really want to catch a fish, I'll just troll this for an hour and I'll catch one. In Osprey Lake, obviously. I don't know about any other lake, but this was also given to me. That also leads me into this other one that I have no idea what the name of it is, but I've, he's got like a brass wrap and a uh, reddish tinged tail, tan almost, I don't know. Um, he's kind of like a brownish with a, a black head. I've caught two fish in this lake with this, one too small, one was a keeper, good sized dinner plate full of fish and there you go but I destroyed it uh, the wraps coming off so I've retired this one I want to find a replacement because this is a good fish for this lake I have no idea what it's called maybe somebody could tell me this was also given to me this was also given to me but I have not put it on the hook yet uh, I've got a few other ones that I've tried uh, creamy teal ones that I've tried that uh, don't know what their names are. So there's a bunch of them. No idea what these are. Maybe somebody else can tell me. But the brown, dark brown one was given to me and I was told I can catch fish on it. Maybe I'll throw that one in the lake today. Let's see if I can catch one. So those are those flies. So I'll just put those back in there. One, two, three, four, five, six. I was given six flies from this old timer. And we got a good chat for like 15, 20 minutes or something. So it was really nice to get some insight on what I should try and what, what isn't gonna work in this lake. Um, I did get a bite on my mosquito. Uh, one bite but it took him like half an hour to get a single bite. So that is another one 
that is a possibility. It's a dry fly, obviously, mosquito. So it's probably good to put on top of the lake late at night too when the mosquitoes are out and the winds have died down and they'll actually bite that. But uh, not enough bites for my liking. I like a little bit more action. So this might be a different, different type of day. Might have different results. Just throw that back in there. Another one that I was pointed out that was in my kit has a purple cape, black body, black head, with like a reddish, I don't know what color that is, maroon colored tail. And I caught two or three fish. Uh, I'm pretty sure at least one was a keeper, whether it kept two of them or not, I don't know. <laughs> because I had it on the fly rod a couple times. It caught quite a few fish. Well, not a lot of fish, but a few. And a lot of bites, a lot of nibbles in Osprey Lake. So that's cool that he pointed that one out and he's like, try that one. That one should have good luck. Another one that he pointed out is this guy. I don't know if it's the woolly bugger or not, but I did not have any luck or whether or not I might put it in again and try again, I don't know. But that's just another hook of uh, worm-ish type buggy thing that I was told to dodge try. I'll throw that in the lake maybe if I have some time before I leave. Um, I don't know what this guy is. But his guy caught me a couple fish in Sugar Lake. But I have not put it in this lake yet. So that brings me to this guy that I was also told to try. I don't know what it, it was a fancy, fancy name. But he's got like a pink body and a white feathered tail or cape, black head, like a pink, pink tail, pink body, green. It's quite a few different fancy colors in there, but I did get quite a few hits on that today, this morning. Uh, no fish in the boat yet, so I'm going to keep it on the rod and try again. And I've also got three more right here to try out as well. A slightly different color, but those are in my kit as well. Um, other ones that I didn't try are bumblebees. I'm, I didn't even know they made these. They are uh, these guys right here. Pretty cool, uh, but I've never put them on a hook and try. I've got quite a few different other ones in here. Got some green ones, some southern ones that look like um, chromium, you know, chromium, 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 mints? I don't know. Chironomid, 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 chironomid. I don't know what that is. Coronamids? I, I might be butchering that. I probably will. But those are something that um, I would like to maybe look into fly tying. Tying a fly one day with those guys. I think that would be kind of cool to get, get into, get a little tie flying kit and look into that one day and learn how to do that. That would be awesome. So that being said, I have flown my own tie when I was young. This guy, I probably caught one or two fish on when I was a little. No idea what it is, it's just a bunch of random threads and some sparkly stuff on there and it's tied down and now it's destroyed because I didn't tie it properly. And it's coming apart and now it's not good anymore. Well, I don't know if it's not good. I could probably catch a fish on there. But it just sits in my tack box because it's so tiny and it's like kind of cute that I made it way back in the day before before I got back into fly fishing. Um, that's all the flies I have except leeches. I have a couple leeches here. I have a big long red sparkly tailed have a red-tailed I've 
got a gold beaded I've got a regular straight up nothing fancy to it just a black leech this one's got a red red tinge to it I was told that this one is good good one to catch the fish in this lake as well but I've not gotten any bites on him. And last but not least is my green leech with the red sparkly tail. These were bought. I just bought a bunch of them just because I wanted a couple. Because I was told the black leeches are the best. But I don't think so. These are all trash. I've never caught any fish with them. But one other buddy caught one on a similar to this. But it was a gold cone tipped, or yeah, gold tipped or brass cone tipped, not a gold bead, but it also had some red to it. So red, black with a gold cone tipped might be better than whatever I got here. I don't know, for safekeeping, put it on a styrofoam and then you don't lose them. So that's being said, I would like to get a fly tying kit and learn how to fly tie. So that'll be on the something that I could probably make some video content with. You gotta be the fly. When you're fishing, you gotta be the fly. You can't just throw it in there and expect to get a bite and, and get a fish. You've got to pretend you're the fly. So. I can show you a couple tricks and techniques that you can use. I've been told kittens catch the fly fishing better than adults do because they play with the rod and they're ADHD and they're just like, they can't sit still because they're always playing with something, right? So that's something that you need to look into when you're fly fishing. It's not just a regular hold it and then let the hardware do the work for you. The hardware, you know, spins and makes fancy flashing and attracts the fish. That's what lure is, right? Except these don't have lures. So how do you catch a fish with a, with a fly rod? You play with it. You just move it back and forth, up and down, this way, that way, this way, that way, this way, that way. Put it in between your legs and, and, and flex your muscles so it's just like a quick jerk, right? jerk because you don't you don't want it to sit still right you want it to you want to move the rod a little bit even if it's just a little back and forth like this just so that flies sitting there and they're doing this in the water right it's not just sitting still flowing through the water it's stopping going stopping going stopping going stopping going stopping going so there's quite a different techniques and tricks and whatever you can use I don't know what the call it term is. It could be called jigging or something like that. I don't know, I just call it playing with the fly rod until you get a fish in the boat, because that's the way to do it. The best fly to put on the rod is the one that catches the fish. So you put on 10 fish until you find the actual rod, or the fly that catches the fish. The leader, the leader needs to be set at a specific depth. The best way to figure out that is a fish finder. The fish finder will tell you where the fish are at. So if you need to be at 10 feet, 12 feet, 15 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet, you, you got, it. You, you know what I mean. So you gotta set um, your leader to that specific depth. And sometimes you need to put a little waiter, a weight on here. Now, I don't know, and I've never done it before, but you can for the other guys doing it. So you've got your float line at 10 feet, and then you've got your lead at eight feet and then it goes from 10 feet to like maybe 14 feet so if you want your fly at 14 feet you put a little weight on there and you put it right at 14 feet so there's ways to do that I don't know how to do that yet so look it up google it figure it out probably figure it out on YouTube you can probably find out how to do that there's probably tutorials and stuff to do that um, the other one is float line. Uh, you can put a float line on it. You want it, you want the line to be on the surface, 
So you make your leader shorter, make it a two foot leader. So your fly will sit on the surface or just a couple inches below, depending on, um, actually I have no idea to be honest. But I do know that if you put a long lead on a float line, it will go down two feet. So if you want the, the leader on a float line to be four feet, so that it'll drop down a couple inches to a foot, two feet, I don't know. That's something to look into. I will have to look into you. and you guys can let me know if you want in the comments below. So that's the type of line, the length of the leader, the depth, and the choosing the speeds of your motor. Some say slower is better, but honestly, if, you, if you're sitting there and you move your rod and it takes 50 seconds for the line to catch up to to the tip of the rod for it to start, you know, stretching again, then you might be going a little too slow. So I've got a 30 pound thrust electric motor on a 10 foot skiff and uh, speed two is perfect. And you can just sit there and you, and you can pull your line. Actually, yeah, that's one thing you can do. Is you can pull your line, let it go. Pull your line, let it go. Pull your line, let it go. Faster, slower, fast, slow, fast, slow, fast, slow. Longer strokes, shorter strokes. Like each time you do that is a different reaction to the fly in the water. So you, sometimes you want short spurts, or sometimes you want long spurts. You know, so there's different ways you can put the, the fly in front of the fish. And there's no wrong way to do it. So you can tell that uh, an old timer will tell you, oh, that's the wrong way to do it. Well, you tell them, well, then you're not a true fisherman because there's no actual wrong way to do it. And the right way to do it is when you get the fish in the boat. So if you can get a fish in the boat the way you want to do it, then who the f cares? It's your f life, dude. Don't listen to other people. Obviously, there's some tips and techniques that make it a better and easier and more chances to catch a fish. But as a little kid, you know, yay hi, you can still catch more fish than those old timers with their 30 years experience fly fishing. So there's some, some knowledge to throw at you. Don't ever listen to exactly what people tell you is what is right and what is wrong. Because sometimes, sometimes the wrong way can be a good way to do it. Who would have thought? So you know, one last thing I'm gonna talk to you about, which I didn't even know was a thing, uh, pumping the stomach of the fish and to find out what they're eating. Because obviously, if you're gonna pump it and you're gonna find mayflies, mosquitoes, or nymphs, that's what you should put on your rod. So that's gonna be something I'm gonna buy for my kit. I'm gonna buy a little uh, fish pumping kit for your st for their stomachs so you can actually find out if they're actually eating chromiumids or if they're eating nymphs or they're eating mayflies, whether they're eating woolly buggers, the stomach will tell you. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this one long video of beginning how to fish, fly fishing for beginners. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I would really like to hear back on your input, on any information that I may have said, maybe it's wrong, I would like to know. Correct me if I am wrong. I would like to even know more, because knowledge is better, and I'm willing to learn. That's why I'm bringing you along with me, so that we can learn what the heck all these are about. You know what I mean? Have a good day.